Good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Dr. Bansi and whole this DICAD team for giving me this talk. Uh, I think this talk is very favorite to Dr. Bansi Sabu. He, I told that I have talked uh, many times on this subject, but he told, no, this is you have to do. Uh, why this is so important that in India, you know that the CBD attributes to nearly 25% of all this. And the overall diabetes prevalence of type 2 diabetes in India is increasing. And it has been also found that the Indian progress faster than from the pre-diabetes to diabetes compared to other ethnic groups. So this will be the scope of my talk, uh, which I will going to discuss. Look, it is very difficult to reduce the CV risk. This is the reality. But the, what the, today we have the evidence, they say that if you target the main risk factors like dyslipidemia, hypertension, smoking, or family history of premature coronary disease, if you take care, you see the albuminuria and BMI and presence of hyperuricemia, uh, this is going to help you. So this is a very, very huge problem, as you are seeing here. I admit that this time, in 2022, the concept of glucocentric approach is weakening. While the tight glycemic control is the backbone of diabetes, the management of, you see the recent trials, they have focused on the cardiovascular risk reduction as the primary objective. So what we find, a contemporary shift in the recommended strategy which extends beyond the glycemic control. This is from the evidence from the CBOTs, but remember, that we must not forget that there are compelling and established data which support the benefit of long-term glycemic control in reducing the risk of microvascular complications and also the importance of legacy effect that is quite clear. So this is my first point I want to make it clear. Now, do you know the risk factors? If you know apne, if you know your enemy ko jante ho, apne dusman ko jante ho, you can make a better strategy. So we know the risk factors. We have got lots of studies on that. So let us identify and discuss about it. This is a very recent uh, data presented at uh, just now, this, uh, this month itself, at the ESC Congress, uh, DENCAVAS trial. You see here, they took a cardiac and truncal non-contrast computed tomography to detect coronary artery calcification score, the brachial and ankle blood pressure, and the blood test to identify high cholesterol and diabetes. And what it showed, at least 11% decrease in those aged 65 to 69 years. And in the post hoc analysis, reduced the risk of composite endpoint of death stroke for myocardial infarction by 7%. So this shows that at least what you are going to uh, tackle these risk factors, this works. And if you go for the so many guidelines, ADA, AS, KIDGO, ESC, ESD, HA, ACC, uh, many others, this is a very, very challenging task to tell you the exact points what we are going to do. But this is editorial. He wrote very, this Martin, Dr. Martin, that the guidelines are generally aligned in recommending lifestyle interventions, number one, aggressive management of blood pressure, LDLC and blood glucose, and providing renal protection. So this is a very, very important statement by him. So main difference says involve risk stratification criteria, lipids and blood pressure treatment targets, and indications for addition of these days, the SGL2 inhibitors and GLP on RH. So prevention of vascular disease and mortality recommendations, you are well aware, you whom to screen. But the, my point is, you, we will follow the ADA 2022, and this is also supported by the RSSDI, that the in asymptomatic patients, the routine screening for coronary artery disease is not recommended as it does not improve the outcomes as long as atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk factors are treated. This is a very, very important point. The second point is more important, that consider investigations for coronary artery disease. If suppose a diabetic patient is coming in your clinic, and if you find he's saying that there is atypical cardiac symptoms, like unexplained dyspnea, chest discomfort, signs and symptoms of associated vascular disease, uh, you have found the carotid broods or transit ischemic attack history there, a stroke, claudication, or peripheral artery disease. 
these are the very, very important clinical pointers which you should take care. And then you categorize whether your patients come in a moderate risk, high risk, or very high risk. You can see how it is being done. Then the question comes, how you accurately CVD risk estimation you are going to do. And there are lots of systems, like uh, ESE says that you follow the S code too, but uh, I will say for the tools for early detection, the QRISC-3 or JBS-3 and coronary artery calcium, lipoprotein A, remnant cholesterol, TRLA, these are very, very important things which you should take care. And basically, ideally country and risk calculator specific risk reduction, uh, these calculators should be used, which we don't have uh, exactly in India at present. But what RSHD mentions that I would like to tell, tell you to follow, that is the QRIS-3, and this is very, very important again. That uh, this is a very simple and uh, very relevant to our population. Then let us how to prioritize it. So this, I think, uh, Dr. Sanjeev Fatak is here, and is very, have done, published so many papers also on the coronary artery uh, this calcium scoring system. I'm not going into detail of that, but this is a very, very important modality which has become e emerged. And I think this is a very important slide which says you how to using the 10-year atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk estimate. If you take your also the CSC score, uh, ki how, when do you should take, uh, uh, start recommend the statins, when not to start. So I will also, this is, a, you can see here, so this is very, very important things that are emerging. Regarding all of these modalities, this coronary artery calcium uh, scoring can reclassify the CVD risk. Number one, the CCTA, the contrast computed tomography coronary angiography, uh, this allows identification of coronary stenosis. IMT, intima media thickness is not recommended. Arterial stiffness, this uh, study show that the predicts future CVD risk another uh, BMI based. Now it is very important clinical things. A diabetic patient coming to you saying that there is migraine, suffering from migraine. You know a two-fold increased risk of ischemic stroke and 1.5-fold increase in the risk of cardiac ischemic disease happens if it's suffering from migraine. In the same way periodontal disease has been linked. The inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, HIV, 19% increased risk. In the same way, ischemic stroke, sex specific, CKD, patient is suffering from arterial fibrillation, NFLD, ED, rectal dysfunction, COAD, OSA. So you take also history in for to your patients. If they are suffering from these things, be very careful. Then you know the tar optimal levels, the target goals. Uh, I think it is well known to you. I will proceed here. Now let us uh, start what we are going to exactly do for our patients. The first thing is go for modification of the diet. You see that the prospective urban and rural, this is a study, pure study, that if you are taking a diet that is highest quantity of glycemic index, had a significant 25% higher risk of combined total deaths and CVD. So this pre the study also says if you are following something around a Mediterranean diet, there is 30% reduction in risk of cardiovascular events. So this is very important, and this is uh, given everywhere, the RSHD, ESI, clinical practice recommendations, how you go for carbohydrates, fats, protein, I will not go in detail, but the important point is, ki on average, a 2% increase in energy intake from trans fatty acid, which you are taking every day, is associated with a 23% higher CHD risk. Here you can do something. And this is very practical tips. Only you take seven gram per day higher intake of total fiber, 9% lower risk of CHD. 10 gram higher fiber intake you can see here. A metallist also saw that if salt reduction, 2.5 gram per day, resulted in 20% reduction of estrocotic cardiovascular events. So even the nuts, a simple thing, a meta-analysis of the prospective cohort of studies has shown that daily if you take 30 gram of mixed nuts associated with a 30% lower risk of escrotic cardiovascular disease. Otherwise, you know about the fish, fish oil supplements. So these are all important things. The second thing, after modifying the diet, 
never forget your patient to tell the exercise is a muscle mitochondrial medicine, the most important thing. And my slogan is ki make your mitochondria green. You can do it, but how the, this looks, this mitochondria of a sedentary person and the exercise trained person. This is a very, very important message. That's, this is the most important intervention you can suggest to your patient. I'm not going to detail now, but even the cardiovascular improvements is immense with the exercise. And uh, also on the NFLD, I mean, going, so these are the things. Even if you go for the data, the recent evidence suggests that adequate physical activity may reduce the risk by up to 27%. If your patient is not able to do daily walking or running, you just suggest five to 10 minutes of doing Surya Namaskara that combines both aerobics, resistance, and even the mind healing, everything by Surya Namaskara. And other thing you can do also the high interval training, which is very takes only five to 10 minutes. Next point is if your patient is suffering from hypertension, this is really the, again the most important intervention you are going to do. And if you, I, I ask you, if your patient says, if which one is more important, tackling hypertension or tackling diabetes, your sugar, what could be the answer? It is a unique fact that tight control of glucose decreases risk of microvascular complications, but the tight control of blood pressure reduces both micro and macrovascular complications. So this is very, very important thing. We have lots of data for that. Then you must have this is chart in your clinic. This is from the, this is very, very important ki how you start with one drug or two drugs in a patient of diabetes. If their patient have uh, even the albuminuria or CK, CAD and pe your, the initial BP is less than 160 and 100, I think no RS accordingly you should start the S inhibitor CRB. But if the patient is having a BP of 160 and 100 more, and also, you must start two agents. And if patient is suffering from albinuria, you must start at least ACE inhibitors. That is a compelling indication again. And if it is not controlled, what to do? Then it can showing here. One pill, one pill, or two pill. That is very, very important. This is all available. The second, the next point is the high intensity statin. This is very, very important point again. Which statin, the moderate intensity or high intensity, and there is lots of things there, but the ADA says that obtain a lipid profile at the initiation of your treatment, and for patients with diabetes, if they're suffering from 40 to 75 years without atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, use moderate intensity statin, addition to the lifestyle, this is a level A indication. In the same way, patients with diabetes, suppose the age is 20 to 39 years, but with additional atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk factors, it may be reasonable to initiate a statin therapy in addition to lifestyle therapy. So for primary prevention, this is the thing. For secondary prevention, I think you are well aware. I will not go in detail for that. Again, the patient is suffering only suffering from the high triglyceride. You must tackle it. And these days, this recent trial, I think just published from the reduced IT trial, it has demonstrated a drug like Icosa pentalethyl. This is have found very, very effective. A significant reduction in the clinically important ischemic events with this drug, including the primary composite endpoints of cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI, non-fatal stroke, coronary revascularization, or unstable angina. So what is the point here? Taken together, these findings call for a re-evaluation and expansion of all the worldwide guidelines to incorp incorporate IP, which is very available in India also, and that dose is something around four gram per day. Now, antiplatelets. They use aspirin therapy, and even for the primary prevention, there are some points where you could consider it. This is regarding this, uh, even if you are suffering from the peripheral artery disease, there are lots of things which you can do. And the last thing, lastly, in the, the concept is changing in diabetology, do they, that from the very beginning, even for the primary prevention, the HGL2 inhibitor should be given. The chamatkar ko namaskar I will not go in details for that. But this is the, what is happening with the ACC latest guidelines from the American College of Cardiology. So my final takeaways are, a key step in the care of patients with type 2 diabetes is to address lifestyle modification.
that is dietary modification, physical exercise, the most important things. And let us impress the importance of prescribing evidence-based glucose lowering therapies, that is SGLT inhibitors, that is now cheaper drug, cheap drug for the diabetes also. It only seven to or 10 rupees you can get it, so get it. And the screening for CAD in asymptomatic type 2 diabetes patient remains debatable at present. And the CCTA, routine use of ischemia testing in asymptomatic patient is strongly discouraged. But coronary artery calcium score appears to provide the most actionable triggers for considering preventable therapies, including antithrombotic drugs, lipid lowering therapies, and GLA, GLP1 RH for primary prevention. And also, you take whether your patient is suffering from DKD. This is very, very important. This has DKD is independently associated with poor outcome. So you should then must choose SGL2 inhibitors or GLP-1 RH, and the most recently a drug like Phenerenon, a selective non-steroidal mineral corticoid receptor antagonist that improves renal and CV outcomes in prevention of the DKD. And traditional strategy for delaying the progression of DKD, you know, so individualize, individualize the approach for the hypertension. And lastly, I think even the non-statin therapy that is going to emerge in the next few days, few years, and uh, like PCSK9 or icosapentalethylene. So lifestyle modification, CV imaging, medications you see here, and follow this mantra of A, B, C, D. HB1C reduction, blood pressure, cholesterol, diet, and exercise. So last point is that adherence to treatment, a healthy diet, and lifestyle modification are important. Believe it. In patients with in reduced residual risk and hypertriglyceridemia, life skull modification plays a critical role. Appreciate it. And reducing the CV risk requires a multifactorial risk reduction strategy. It happens. And team-based approach is needed. Uh, this is an art to tackle. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for patience hearing. Dr. Anke Singh has nicely deliberated uh, how we uh, reduce the severe restriction in di type 2 diabetic patients. So, uh, any question from uh, audience? Dr. Saji, what, what is, I will ask rather a question, ki because yes. you are more uh, uh, experienced with uh, doing this coronary calcium scoring. So, what is your experience? Thank you for acknowledging that work. Uh, but my question to you is, uh, uh, ADA does not recommend routine screening in absence of symptoms. Yeah. Is it relevant for our Indian patients also? Because time and again we found, find that there are patients who are asymptomatic, high risk, and if we get their coronary calcium score, it turns out to be 1,000, 2,000. The treadmill comes to be positive, though they are not symptomatic, whether to intervene or not. I think you have raised a very, very pertinent uh, question that uh, Indian patients definitely differ in lots of senses. So what we are following in most of our guidelines, even in the Indian guidelines, maybe the uh, Endocrine Society guidelines or RSSDA guidelines, basically I don't think we have a proper study at present in India so that we can recommend you, but I think uh, this must be uh, taken care by the RSSDA and uh, we must have some uh, inputs on that for the evidence-based strategy. At present we don't have so we follow the Indi Americans, but I think your point is very valid. So in the event, even the Indian diabetics, asymptomatic, but if there is any clinical pointer, then I think you should go for the... True, because the yeah. Dan Canva study also mentioned that the routine yeah. screening may be helpful in yeah. selected group of uh, patients depending upon age and gender. Exactly. Any other question? 